you see today, we come into the presence of God and, and, and we stand here today, uh, but, but we don't stand here just, just to, to stand up here and to uh, give a speech or some kind of a, you know, just, just to motivate you in some way. We came here to speak life. We came here to receive life. We came here that God might be worshipped and He might be glorified. We came here, and the, and the reason that we're here, the, the, the whole purpose for us being here, is because something real is taking place in our lives. And it has to be this way. Something real has to take place in our lives. If it's not real, there's no purpose and there's no reason for you and I to stand in here today. So it has to take place. There, there's a real devil. There's real pain. There's real sickness. There's, there's real, there, the, the realities are ever before us. But here's the thing. Sometimes I believe that we feel helpless against them, even being Christians, if we're honest with ourselves. We look at the things, and the, and the world sometimes is so overwhelming, and we, we're being so inundated with the world, that, that we sometimes find ourselves in a struggle against uh, our own flesh. The Bible says that we have three enemies, the flesh, the world, and the devil. And these three enemies are relentless in their pursuit against the things of God. Now, what I see, and, and, and what I've seen in, 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 in my heart, and, and studying God's Word, and not just the studying the Word, but actually beginning to see the process of His Word taking effect, and, and, and how His Word is so uh, telling, and how it reveals even the things that are taking place in our world today. What I see is there's such a lack of concern for the things of God. We, we don't put as much emphasis on the things of God that need to be. We, we, we put so much emphasis on our, on our, own, on our own selves, on our own person, on, on where we're going and, and our own goals and our, and, and our own desires and, and where we're going to live and, and how much money we can uh, accumulate and, and to make sure that we have a, a good retirement. And, and all of those things are good and well. But there's so little emphasis put upon the spiritual man. Paul says in speaking to the Romans, he says, we're debtors, but we're not debtors to the flesh. We're not to live after the flesh. You know, we used to believe in holiness. We used to believe in sanctification. We, we, we used to believe in a lot of things. We, we used to believe that, that just why do things that don't edify or don't build up, why even do them? Why entertain thoughts uh, that, 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 that don't help me spiritually? We, we used to focus so much upon the things of God rather than the things of this world. And, and, and here's the thing. We, we, we failed to realize that the spiritual is absolutely real. Or if we realized it, we have, we have gotten to a place where we're so out of touch that we don't know how to be spiritual people. See, Paul addresses this because he says that if we live after the flesh, then, then one day we're, we're going to die. And he's not just talking about a physical death, but he's talking about an eternal death. There's a resurrection unto life, and there's a resurrection unto death. Every person will stand before God one day, and at that day, God is going to separate them. And, and, and so if we're living to the flesh and catering to the flesh and, and doing the things of the flesh, then we find ourselves just, just so wrapped up in this world. And, 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 and so we go, and, and, and as a pastor, I find myself visiting people, and, and always there's a struggle that, that, because the world's always before us, always there's a struggle of, is there faith? Is there faith enough to believe? Is there faith enough to step out? If, if, I, if I come into this room and I, and I pray, am I praying in faith? Am I, am I praying under the authority of God's presence, His Spirit, and His power? 
And, and if I pray, and, and every Christian I believe has is, is, is had this challenge, if I pray, is it going to change anything? And so, so sometimes we pray, and we pray almost in this manner, hope this works. We're going to we're going to pray and, and, and then and then we'll 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 say to somebody else, pray for me. Almost as if we're we're saying, just in case this actually works. And and why do we have that mentality? Because we're so we're so influenced by the world. You see, when we mind the things of the world and we get so caught up in the things of the world, then we then we begin to, to, to stray away from the things of God. And God becomes smaller and the things of the world become bigger. And, and our problems begin to mount and, and they begin to look greater and larger than God. And, and, and because, because we're so... And, and, and so, so instead of praying, this is what we'll do. We'll, we'll go and we'll tell somebody about our problems, our situation, and, and we'll exalt our problems. And, and then we'll go and listen to something that is ungodly it, 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 just to try to take our mind off of it so, so, that, we can, so that we can just try to forget about it. And, and, and in the world, they, they, they even, they, they, you, know, you, you know how it goes. The, the alcoholic, he just drinks to, to drink away his problems and, and, and then hoping in the morning they'll be gone. But in the morning, they're right there and they're bigger than ever. And, and we as Christians, maybe you don't run to the bottle. But, but you run to, to, to other things that don't edify, that don't build you up, that don't strengthen your faith, but they tear down your faith. Instead of running to the things of God and, and getting on our knees and waiting upon God and, and, and obeying God and doing the things that God has asked us to do, instead of realizing that we have been set apart and separated for a mighty work of God that God might show His strength and power in this earth through you and me, the church. I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 28. I want you to see something here this morning. I was praying about this and just this past week and just thinking about what we were coming into and, and the world. And, and you, you look around the world and you see the problems that are taking place, not just in our country, but around the world. We're being challenged on every side. Where, where there's challenges for the Christian at home. There's challenges for the Christian politically. There's challenges for the believer in every facet of life. There are challenges for the believer. Here's the thing, and, and, and here's what God has given us, you and I, to do. But we have to understand this. We have to understand this. That our, that our mission, our calling, is real. You see, you don't, you don't want to get into this and realize that what you're getting into isn't real. Because even the Bible says for, for a good man, one might even die. But it's, nobody's going to die for a person that doesn't have any truth or doesn't stand for anything. But for a good person, somebody might actually give their own life and their own purpose. And, and, and thinking about this before I get ahead of myself, uh, chapter, chapter 28, verse 16 then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. See, there's an appointed place for, for each one of us. There's a place where God has appointed for you and I. There's, and I would even say that there is a time for your appointment. But, but here's the thing, and here's one of the greatest things that you'll have to know. You have to be ready at any moment because you never know when the time or the place will be. And, and, and so, so you have to be ready. He says this in verse 17, And when they saw, they worshipped Him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, and I want you to pay very close attention to what Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Anything lacking? Is there anything lacking here? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Um, power over your sickness? Is that included? Uh, power over addiction? Is that included? Uh, power over the struggles that you're going to face a year from now? 
And all of it's included. All power, meaning there is no authority and no power that has not been given to Christ. Okay? So here he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, and, and pay attention to this, and lo, um, I'll congratulate you when you get home. I'll, 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 I'll be with you um, after you get through it, on the other side of it. No, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing that you and I, uh, we, we sometimes we don't realize. You see, this is this is this is our mission. If, if you would, we have been commissioned. So this is what we call. This is when we read this, we say this is the great commission that Jesus Christ has commissioned us and and He's called us into. And and but but here's here's the problem. We sometimes think that Christ called us into this, but He doesn't have the ability to equip us for the calling that He's placed upon us. <coughs> And so we think for some reason that we're going to go against the devil and the world and everything else. And, 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 and Christ hasn't equipped us. He, he, hasn't, he hasn't done the, the, the complete work in us. And, and so we're, it's going to be a struggle. And, 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 and here's the thing. We, we, we doubt just as they did. Jesus Christ came and some doubted. And, and so we doubt a lot of times. And, and, and God is, is this really what you want me to do? And, and if I do this, are you going to meet my every need? And, 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 and if, I, if I take this step of faith, uh, and, and we want to just tiptoe out there because we're not sure if all power... Did you hear me? We're, we're not sure if all power in heaven and earth is given unto Him and being heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, that all power is given unto unto who? Unto Christ, but unto unto me. See, that's where it breaks down because this is this is the part where where our carnal man, and our carnal mind, try to step in, and, and we begin to think, well, you know, I know Christ has power. But, but what about me? Uh, am, I, am, I, am I going to be well enough equipped when I get out there? Is, 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 it, 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 you know, I, I believe that God will meet your every need. But, but if it's me going out there, is He going to meet my every need? See, and I can have so much faith for, for somebody else. But, but when it's time for me to step out, do I have enough faith for God to, to move in my life. If, if, if you're sick, I, I, I can come in and I can be a, a man of faith and prayer and, and lay hands on you and believe for you, but, but if I get sick, it's all power in heaven and earth given to me. So we've been commissioned. We've been commissioned by God to do a work for God. Now, I, I, I thought about this as I was as I was looking over this. We've been commissioned, all right, to put the devil out of commission. Same word, spelled the same way. We we've been commissioned to put the devil out of commission because this is what he says. He says, "All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." And therefore, being heirs and joint heirs with Christ, and I want you to get this point, being heirs and joint heirs with Christ, I receive that authority, and he, and he tells us that, that all powers is now given unto us. In Ephesians chapter 1, he, he says that, that He's the head, and He's seated at the right hand of God, and, 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 and we're the body, and, and we have that same authority and same power, but it comes from the head. And, and, and we don't know what part we are, but, but we're part of the body. And so that same authority, that same power to lay hands on the sick, to cause devils to, to flee, whatever it is, is given unto you and me. But there's a thing here, and, and, and here's what we don't understand, 
Here's what we don't understand. Is this, that, that, that there is a standard, there is a way to have power, and, and there's a way that you will never have power. As long as you are so entangled and enticed by this world, there is no power for you or me. And see, this is, this is the part that, I, that I've seen happen so often in the life of believers. You'll identify, I believe, I believe most people will identify with this. Here's the thing. You, you came to know Jesus Christ and something happened, right? Right? You, you, don't ex you, you can't explain it, right? But something happened. There was a, a weight lifted off of you. There was, there was a, an excitement inside of you, right? And, and something happened. I, I, I don't know. You, you, you might stand. I don't know exactly what happened, but something real happened. I, I, I no longer had a craving for the things that I used to crave. And I, and I no longer had a desire to, to go to the places maybe I, I used to go to. Something in me changed. There was a power over all the power of the devil in my life. But, but here's the problem. We, we live long enough and the world keeps coming in because we're not fostering that relationship with Christ and we're not, we're, not, we're not giving ourselves over to Jesus Christ in the manner that we should. And so, so, so the world, once again, starts creeping in, right? And, and, and what happens is this. Okay, when, when you first came and that zeal was there and you had such, you, you had such a, a desire for the things of God, you wanted to know everything that God had for you. you I mean, you read His Word and you saw a promise and you said, that's mine. And, and, and I want it. And you said, and, and, you, and you, you know this, you didn't even quote it, but it's just some kind of a zeal. You said, every promise is yes and amen unto your children. And I want it. I want it. I want that promise. What do I have to do to get it, God? Right? And so, so you'd pray, and you'd, you'd draw closer to God. You'd begin to read your word, and, and God would, would draw you in. And, and here's the thing. Sanctification began to, took pl to, began to take place, and, and God began to, to separate you for a work. And, and, and I remember this so much in my life. There were things that, that maybe they weren't necessarily all that bad, but God said, you know what? If you want to draw a little bit closer to me, there's some things that you've got to just get rid of because, because you need to spend some more time with me. And, 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 so, and so, if I wanted to get closer to God, there were some things that I had to sever and I had to cut. But, but here comes the problem, and I've seen it so much, is, is the things that we sever to draw closer to God. We started saying, well, they're not all that bad, right? And so I, I can still be a Christian, I, I, I can still have a relationship with God, but, but you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move out into this just a little bit more. You had, you had severed it before, and there was no question about it because you'd gotten rid of it so that you could draw closer to God. But all of a sudden, now it's something that has happened in your relationship, and the zeal is not there, and the fire is dying out. And you say, well, well you know what? I, I know I used to do that, and, and it really wasn't all that bad, and, 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 and it's really not going to send me to hell, right? So, so why not just do it? Because, because my flesh wants it. And this, is, and this is what he's saying in Romans chapter 8. He said, we are not debtors to the flesh. Get away from the things of the flesh. Paul tells Timothy, he says to Timothy, be like a good soldier. A soldier who has enlisted into the army, he no longer he is entangled in the affairs of the, the, of the world, of the common things, because he's got a goal and a focus in mind. And, and, and here's the thing. What, why do I have a goal? Why do I have a focus? Because there's something on the other side. We're working toward something. We're working toward a relationship with God. We're working toward something. And this is what Paul says. He says this in, in verse 17. If, if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ in and, and chapter 8 and he say, uh, of Romans, and he says, and if it is if so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified Amen. together. This is what the Word says. That when Jesus comes, He brings His reward with Him. That when He comes, 
in, 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 the, in, the, in the end time, that at the final days, he says, he brings his reward with him. And so, so I, 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 just to put a little play on words, if you would, we've been commissioned to put the devil out of commission Amen. in order to receive a commission. You see, we're working toward something. There's, there's something that's going to pay off in the end. Now, now we know that the devil has power. We know that the devil has authority. Uh, turn with me to, to Psalm 125. I, I want you to see this for yourself. Because, because you, you know, we, we, we sometimes we try to make light of it. We try to, we try to we, you know, play around with the things of God. And, and, you know, it's really not that bad. And, and I can continue to do this. And, and it's really not going to hurt me. And, and we don't realize it, but it is killing us spiritually. And, and, and here's a greater a greater problem, it is killing those who are around us. You see, because, because we are here to represent Jesus Christ and, 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 and we are here as His ambassadors, we are here as an example for others to follow and, and, and so anything I do, and, and, and here's this, and, and this is something that I'm so careful, so careful, so careful with my kids. And, and I want you to be very careful. And, and, and here's the thing. There's, there's, there's no difference between you and me. Just because I'm standing up here, it, it doesn't mean that, that I'm better than you. It doesn't mean any of that. It doesn't mean that... No, no. Here's the thing. And this is something that I express to my kids all the time because, because I've heard it so much and, and it just, to the point, it made me sick in ministry. That, that I would hear people say, Oh, well, well I was a pastor's kid. Poor little me. And, and I've heard pastors, oh, it's just because of pastor's kids and they're always, you know, this and that and pastor's kids and pastor's kids and, 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 and they almost wore it like, like it was some kind of a badge or something that I've been beaten and bruised and, and, and this is something that I tell my kids and, and, and when I'm getting ready to teach the discipline and correction I, I make sure I stress this. I say it's not because, because I'm a pastor. It's because you, because me, because every one of us that sits in this place today, we're the children of God. Amen. We are Christ followers. Now, now, is there some weight that's going to be extra upon the, the one who ministers the word? Yeah, because, because if we minister this thing wrongfully, I'm telling you, you don't want to be there. And so I don't want to be there. So, so, but here's the thing. The same standard for you, for me. Same standard, nothing different. You say, well, well wait a minute, Pastor. See, we, we, we've in other religions, we've exalted men, and we've, we've lifted a man. Oh, the, 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 the priest is so high, and this guy is so high, and this woman is so mighty, and, and, and this is and, 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 No, no, same standard. Same standard. And, and we look at the Apostle Paul, and, and we look at Peter. Whoa, oh, man, they're, they're on a whole other level. No, 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 they're same level. They're Christ followers. And, and, and so the message that I speak to you, it's not just for, for those that are spiritual and those that are teachers and those that are the, those that are serve in the church. This goes for every single person. We are Christ followers. Amen. And God expects something out of us. And, and so, so I live as an example. And somebody might say, well, well, I'm not a pastor. I don't have to do that. I don't have to live. It's not about being a pastor. It's about being a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and, and He's going to come back. And, he, and He's going to ask me. And, 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 and here's the thing. When we look a lot of times, and in, 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 in these last days, we look a lot of times at the world, and, and we look at the church, and, and we think, well, well, sometimes, some people say, and we, we've heard it, that that's what being a Christian is. I don't want anything to do with it. You know what? If that was what being a Christian is... I wouldn't want anything to do with it. And, and so we look, and, and Jesus, if you remember, He tells the parable of the ten virgins. All were virgins. All had been set apart for a, for a work. All had lamps. 
all were, were ready to be married to the groom. He's talking about the church and the rapture of church. And, and, and so all were ready, supposedly, at least on the outside, you couldn't tell them apart. You looked at them, they all had their garments, they all sang in the church choir, they all taught in the Sunday school, they all came and listened. They came on a Wednesday, they came on a Sunday, they, they, were, they were faithful to, to church, but, but something was missing. And, 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 and the, real, the, the real problem showed up when, when Christ showed up. You, you see, we, we, we come into church week after week and, and we put on this facade as long as I come to church. And, and as long as I, as I teach in a, in a Sunday school class, as long as I serve in some part of ministry, as long as I give into the offering, I, I've done my duty. It's not about a duty. It, it, it's about being a Christ follower and being a genuine Christ follower. And so listen to what he says. Psalm 125. See, it says that they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which, and, and say that with me, cannot, cannot be removed, but abides forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about His people from henceforth even forevermore. Now I want you to pay very close attention to verse 3. He says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of of the righteous. You see, a rod stands for authority. It stands for power. And so, so here's the thing. Satan has authority and Satan has power, but we have been given what? All power in, in, in heaven and in earth. And, and so the authority of Satan, the power of Satan has no power over the power that I've been given. And, and so when he moves in, whatever it may be, I have authority and power over the power of the devil. And so we have to understand this. If Satan has authority or power over me, it's because I gave it to him. I let him have it. Because, because something went wrong in me. Not, not, not in Christ. He still has the authority. He still has the power. And, and, and now I want to read to you because I left you. I, I, if I would, if I would stop reading there, you and I would would just. It, it wouldn't be any good. Look what he says. He says, but that, but it will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. This, did you hear what he said? He said, that devil isn't going to have any authority, any power over you, unless the righteous lays his hand to do it. Oh, no, I mean, in most churches, ah, oh, you don't have to worry about it. Grace. You don't have to worry about it. Mercy. You, you don't have to worry about being good. I, I remember they used to preach, behave and stay safe. We, we, don't, we don't believe that anymore. We, we just believe, just, just pray this little prayer, go on your merry little way and do the best you can. No, th th this was, this is what he's saying. He says, the devil has no power and no authority over you and me unless we touch the evil thing. And, and, and here's, can I tell you this? To know to do good and not do it is sin. Because whatever we do, we have to do in faith. We have to do believing, and our conscience cannot condemn us. So, so here again, let me let me just make this statement right here, loud and clear. If something is 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 coming against your conscience, if you are feeling the conviction of God. Are you going to take it? Don't do it. it one thing that I've, I've, I've seen so much, so much, and, 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 and it, I guess it makes me sick more than anything. But, but just to see, you see, some people think, oh, pastors, pastor is the standard. And, and 
and, and, and I, I, through my years, I've heard people say, well, uh, what do you think pastor would say? Or what do you think pastor thought? Well, well, if you're worried about what I would think, you're in big trouble. Because <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I would think. It has everything to do with what he thinks. And, 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 and if I come up on the scene and it makes you feel the least bit bad about what you are doing, then my goodness, you better not do it because there's someone who holds a much higher standard than me. And, and, and you're not doing it in faith. And, and here's the thing, to know to do good and not to do it is sin. And, and, and we call that the sin of omission. We, we should do good, but, but, but if I don't do nothing, well, and we think this, we, we, we have this in our mind, that, that well, if I don't do anything, then, then it'll be okay. Somebody else will do it. No, 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 it's sin. You should have done it. You see, there, there's that sin of commission where you commit the act, but there's that sin of omission where you just didn't do what God asked you to do. And so, so, so when we begin to do and to go against our conscience, we are setting our hand upon the iniquity. <coughs> and Satan moves in. You remember the story? I, I brought it up to see you recently about the donkey, the talking donkey, and, and Balaam and the, and the talking donkey. You, you remember the story, right? That God, the devil couldn't do anything to the people of God. And, and, and then the, the, the prophet of God said, you, you can't touch them. God's hand's on them. He says, the only way you can get to them is let them put their hand on the wicked thing. Tempt them, tease them, entice them, bring them out of God and let them touch it. And then you can have power and authority over them. As long as they're in Christ, as long as they're doing what they should do, you can't touch them. I, I, I didn't finish. Listen to what he says right here in, 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 in the following verse, verse 4. He said, do good, O Lord. Do good, O Lord. And, and somebody read it. Read it out loud for me. Oh, my goodness. I think everybody ought to put a little circle, a little dash, something right there. Right there. Right there. Because, because this goes completely against what, what is being taught and preached in our churches and even today. Do good unto those that be good. Oh, that, that act right. That, that follow what you tell them to do. That, that, that are obedient and that are right in their heart. Not to those who can put on the show and, and to those who can act like they're somebody and, 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 and they can know it all and do all the, and, and do all the outward things. But, but, but God sees the heart and He says, do good unto those who, who, who be good and, and, and to those, to them that are upright in their hearts. And, and, and so, so the Word of God surprises us all the time. And this is the thing. We are not to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. But we get so wrapped up in them and we get so caught up in the things of this world and, and, and they, they take all of our time and they drain the life of Christ out of us and, and then we wonder sometimes why, 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 we're, why we're being defeated and why the enemy has authority and why the enemy has power over us and we, we wonder. And, and I want to I wanna show you a verse just to, just to kind of blow your mind a little bit because, because we, we, we say this, we say... Jesus loves everybody, right? God loves everybody, right? God loves everybody. And, and, and there's a truth to that. Doesn't want any to perish, but listen to this. Just to, because this is what the Word of God says, and I'm not giving you anything that, that the Word of God doesn't say. This is what he says. In Proverbs chapter 8, if you have your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 8, you can write it down, you can go back and look at it if you want to, if you don't have your Bibles. But I want you to see this because this is the pastor saying this. Because, because we, we, we often say, well, God loves everybody, right? I mean, He loves me, He loves you, He loves us all. And, and this is the way that it is. And, and, and so, so here, here, here it is. Because we're talking about separating ourselves, being set apart unto God. We're, we're talking about desiring Him more than anything else in this world. Can I tell you this? In order to love something, you have to hate something else. To love God, you have to hate sin. 
this is what he says in verse, in verse 17. I love them. Go ahead. Let me, and, and let, me, let, me, let me read it to you from, from the King James. I love those. I love them that love me. You know, we, 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 we try to get into this thing, and, and, and here's the thing with the Word of God, because here, I, I, I'm so tired of, of, of the church playing church. I'm tired of the church acting like the church instead of being the church. You see, the, 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 as we've been saying, the commission that we've been given is real. And, and, and so the power and the authority that we have is absolute authority and power. And, 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 and yet we, we play around and we, we, we just think sometimes that Christianity only has to do and, and only affects our life on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday evening. And, 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 and it doesn't have anything to do when I wake up at 4.35, 5 in the morning, whatever it is, and I get up and I and I clothe myself to get ready to walk out the door and to go whatever job that I'm going to. My Christianity has no bearing. Listen to me. From the very moment that you awake, God better be on your mind. And to the very moment that you go to bed, God should be on your mind. And and, and then and then here's the thing: when you're sleeping, God ought to be on your mind. Because, because a lot of times what happens, you dream the things you think most about. <coughs> put a you know, pause on some. We dream about the things that we think most about. And so, so here's the thing. God has commissioned us to put the devil out of commission in this life. And, and in the end, we are going to receive a commission. Now see, the Holy Spirit comes, and by the miracle of, of, of that new birth of Christ in us, He empowers us to be able to go out and to fulfill our commission. Because here's the beautiful thing about the commission. You were never called to do it alone. Jesus said, I will do it with you. I will go with you every step of the way. Every devil you encounter, I'm going to be right there speaking to that devil. Every, every sickness that you come up against, I didn't tell you to go out and do this thing alone, but I need you to do it for me, and I'm going to be right there with you every time you step out in faith. You see, this is why it's so important not to get entangled with the things of this world. Because what happens? We get so entangled with the, with the world that, that, our, that our thoughts are no more upon God. And, 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 and here's the thing. I, I mean, God help us. God help us. We, get, we, 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 we watch movies and, 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 then, and, then, and then we see superheroes and we, and we see these things and, 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 and you don't have to try to do anything. And, but, but those things begin to invade your thoughts and, and, and have you ever realized for the next couple of hours all you can think about is what you just got done watching. And, 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 then, and then the X-Men are greater than God and and all of those things, and we get so caught up in the things of this world, and we should be constantly feeding our spirit with the things of Christ. It's made me sick to see the things that are happening in the church world today. It's made me sick, you know, to see the things that are taking place in the church world today. Hear me. And this is why I say this. This is why I say this. When you go out to a restaurant, Rarely, rarely do you hear godly music, right? When, when, when you go out to a shopping center, you, you, you rarely hear anything godly. And and when when you go out there, you, you, the world's always shoving everything in your face. You, you take a look around and post a board, and it's just like, my goodness, you're going down the, the aisle at the, at the grocery store, and you all of the, the world's trash is right there presenting itself before you and, and, and you're seeing all of this stuff and, and it's like the world is constantly inundating you and so, so here's the thing when you get back to your own home you keep shoving that garbage in think about it think about it do you, do you keep pushing that garbage in 
And, and do you keep letting the world consume you? <coughs> what about your children? What do they look at online? What are, what, what are, what are they doing? What are they doing? And what, what kind of friends are they going out? The things that you can control, the things that you should be controlling. And, and then what kind of a music are you listening to when you, when, you, when you go home or when you're driving down the road in the car? Don't worry, you're going to listen to country music or something else when you get to the restaurant or something. That you, you don't have to have it playing in your car. And, 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 and all of the other junk that's out there, and, and we just keep feeding the, 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 the beast. We keep feeding Satan himself with the things of this world. And this is what Paul is saying, is, is we are not debtors to the flesh. We are debtors to Christ. Christ bought us. He paid for us. He died for us. He's worthy of our sacrifice. He's worthy of it all because in the end, we get commissioned. We get to be glorified with him. <laughs> And so, so here's the thing. When, when, when you, you need to be feeding yourself and you need to be reading things that are godly. You need to be putting God inside of you. And you need to be finding yourself on your knees in prayer. You need to be seeking God every moment that you can because once you step off into the world, the world's going to be right there to present itself to you. But here's the thing. You've been getting ready all morning. You've been putting on that, that breastplate of righteousness. You, you put on that belt of truth and you, 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 you put that word of God on. You heard that word of God that morning. It's, you worshiped and you sang and you let God do something great in you. When you get out into that world, listen to me. You're going to get out of your car and somebody's going to be confronting you. And all you have to do is say, All power in heaven and earth, all authority is given unto me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, We've been called, we've been commissioned in the kingdom of heaven. There's no use and no need getting all entangled in this life and in this world. We're not of this world. We're in this world. We have to, we have to live in here until Jesus comes. But we don't have to be tied to it. We don't have to do the things that they've done. And the thing that's made me sick is, is a sad thing that I've seen the churches you walking in the church and you go into a special convention or something and they've got worldly music playing in the background. They've got worldly music playing in the background. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to get that when I go to the restaurant. I don't need that in church. But why, why do we allow the things of the world into the church thinking somehow that they're going to help us bring people out of the world. No, all we've done was brought the world into church and expected that same world to save the people that, that are trying to get out of the world. And we're not providing them any kind of consolation. We're not providing them any kind of, a, a, of, a, of an experience uh, uh, with, with God and, and a release from the things of this life. And see, and here's the thing. We get so caught up in the world. And, and remember the ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. The five foolish, they, 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 they got caught up in the world. And, and the Bible says that their oil ran out. That Holy Spirit is the oil of God inside of their life. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and me. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our salvation. Meaning, He is the down payment that God promised you and me. That when He comes back, He's taking you with Him because you've been purchased. But here's the thing. We trade that Holy Spirit for the things of the world and, and then the trumpet sounds and all of a sudden we're looking for some oil and there ain't no oil to be, to be bought. And we're trying to get ready. Spare the moment. And, 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 and it's going to be a sad thing because most of the church world is going to wake up one day and realize that their lamps are out of oil. They got the garments. Those are the people going to stand before God and say, God, did not we preach? Did not we cast out death? Didn't we do all of these things in your name? He's going to say, who are you? I personally, you can stand this morning as we close.